Hello everyone, uh, welcome, I know it's been a long time and I apologize, but I've got something new for you today and I really hope you like it. Uh, so basically right now what I've done is I've gone ahead and created myself a quick environment so we can do this audio programming and I've preset it up. Basically what I've done is we took a look here, we have um, build cmakelist.txt include libs and main.cpp base li literally all this is if you come here so if you come here, I've just gone ahead and I preloaded the um, the sine wave example of sound IO dot dot slash include. And um, the reason I've done this is because first I'm going to go ahead and dissect this and show you exactly what is going on. Second, I'm going to be uh, then showing you how to use lib SMV file to play audio, you know, play a song from. Um, from uh, a, a file, and so include include slash sound I O W H Y. Is that called an error? Oh, because I need to go ahead and do this. That's why. Yep. And so, <coughs> um, like I said, I preset up. So we have build. See if I go to build, all it is is just see make that dot right now um, we have include I've just gone ahead and I've already put the headers we need in here and if we look in libs I've just put it all the um, libraries that I compiled that I, that I need to go ahead and make sure this runs this varies you know per computer but um, uh, you should generally should need to do this uh, my people who have seen my videos before should know I you know I'm s I switched over to, to Windows now you know, look, there's a reason it looks really different, and so I switched over to Arch, so it doesn't have like any of these libraries installed. So I had to go ahead and just compile them and, and install them in myself. <coughs> um, I've also switched to Emacs, which I just think is really great. But yeah, <coughs> real quick, we're gonna go ahead and just go through all of this, uh, starting with main, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I, you know, I was doing this for project, I found. No, like l no, almost no documentation other than like, you know the 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 programming API. There's no, like no documentation or tutorials or anything. Uh, yeah, and there's not many options either. But let's get into it. So first, as we can we see, we ha um our, you know have this uh, first sound I/O data structure, sound I/O, and we're creating a sound I/O. Pretty simple. If you know it failed to create then that means you know we're out of memory uh, then we're gonna try and connect and presumably you know that's going ahead and try and connecting it to the audio um, server where we have going on your computer in my case it, I use pulse audio um, then we're going ahead and flushing events this is to go ahead and you know just get the environment set up then we're just finding out what's the default device and grabbing its indexed um, through the sound audio sound IO uh, pointer and uh, real quick as you can know this is a pointer to like it where it is uh, and then we're grabbing the device itself again you know just error checks um, and so uh, we're printing the device name uh, then we're creating a st output stream this is um, you know how we're gonna go ahead and, and, and write to so that we can go ahead and actually you know produce audio. Then we're going to go ahead and use the outstream dish format and this is just telling it which you know which format to use. In this case this is float 32 and E uh, uses I think what like Endians. I'm not honestly too familiar um, and I only have a basic grasp. And then next we're going ahead and setting the outstream write callback and this is going to be the function the function name is write callback is up above and I'll show you here in a second. This is going to be the function that is, you know, called whenever we're trying to, uh, to, to, to write to the, the, um, the audio, to go ahead and play the audio. And that's where the meat of this is. Um, all of this is just kind of stuff you have to do first. And then, um, just error checking, uh, as we can see here, the, um, soundio outstream open, starting the stream, so we can go ahead and start playing audio to it. If there's an error in the layout, uh, throw an error, and then, uh, now that we have opened the output stream, this is you know us telling it to go ahead and start the stream, and then this is just an infinite loop. 
you know, um, just saying waiting for events. And then once everything's said and done, and that's all over, uh, we destroy the outstream. Uh, we unreference the device, and we destroy the sound object. And this is so we can go ahead and just properly, you know, prevent any data leaks, uh, memory leaks. Sorry. But here's where the meat of the program is. What's going on is is right in here. Is this right callback? And you know, say we go ahead and uh, and make it real quick. Uh, where is it? Signal files and function right callback sound I/O outstream undefined in reference to sound I/O outstream begin right. Um. It's I like I've had this error so often it's kind of annoying. What if I do make clean make no still getting it uh, undefined reference. That just means like a library isn't being made properly. Uh, one second here. One second. Anyways, um, so like I said, this is where the meat of it is. So. Our function here is called write callback, and the things that we're given in this function is we're given the outstream itself, we're given the frame count minimum and the frame count maximum. And so basically, what's going on here is you know, it's it's trying to divvy up the workload, and so we only have so much time where we can go ahead and write, uh, write to the the buffer that is. And so, sorry, I just dropped something. Disappeared. Anyways. Um, and so this is just telling us the minimum amount of frame counts, which is usually zero, and then the maximum amount of frames that we can go ahead and iterate through. Um, next up, we're going ahead and creating, we're grabbing the layout for the outstream, uh, and then we're grabbing the sample rate, and if you remember, that's just basically like a, like a 44 kilo, or 44.1 kilohertz, or Whatever it's the um, how much information like what's the information density basically, um, and the reason you want to go ahead and make sure you have this is because uh, I'll give you a hint about a later bug that's going to be in the code we're going to write. Uh, if the sample rate's not correct, the audio is going to go ahead and be either too fast or too slow, and it'll sound really off. And I can demonstrate that. <coughs> then we're going ahead and calculating seconds per frame. So the sample rate, right, remember I said it's 44.1 kilohertz, that's, um, we can go ahead and inverse this. Think of it, you know, if you know physics, as this is like uh, H, sorry, C is equal to um, F lambda, right? It's kind of like that. So um, in this case, we want to find the wavelength in a sense. We go ahead and do one over the sample rate. Uh, to go ahead and get the time it takes per frame, while as this is basically how many frames it is per second. So it's just inverting it. Next, we're going ahead and grabbing our sound channel areas, and then we're saying the amount of frames left we have to use is equal to the frame count maximum, and then this is just going to keep track of errors. So then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to, um, while we still have frames left, which is greater than zero, we're going to go ahead and uh, set the f our frame count equal to frames left. And we're going to go ahead and um, sound IO outstream begin write. This is just us telling it that we're going to go ahead and begin writing. However, it is important uh, to note this. We're passing it the outstream, we're passing it the areas, and we're passing, sorry, we're passing the outstream, but we're passing a reference um, of area and frame count. And so basically what's going on here is the most important thing you have to pay attention to is the reference to the frame count. Because we're putting in how many frames we want to to write, and as and it's going to once it's done with that, it's going to set the um, frame count value to the amount that uh, that we're allowed to write, if if that makes any sense. So we pass it how many we want, and it'll tell us how much we can. And so uh, what this leaves us is like you know saying this like this is how many frames left we want for this iteration, and um, 
and so, sorry, I'm blanking, and, uh, and then it just, yeah, it, like, we wanted to continuously doing it, so it was telling us, like, how many we possibly can write, and we're saying we just want to write, basically, as much as we possibly can, anyways, we break down, you know, just, uh, some error codes, and then we're getting to this part, which is, a which is actually the part that is writing, like, this, this just code right here is actually the responsible for creating the sound. Um, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, if I do this, cmakeList.txt, project sample, Docker libs, include directory, include, find package txt file, add it like executable and sound client main scpp target link file project make libs what if i do this right and then sorry <laughs> i don't know if i'll edit this out or not and so then this as kind of cheating there. I'm just copying this from what my original project was, but I wonder if that will build. And then, yeah, it did. I don't. I don't know what the difference was. I'm gonna be completely honest and undo it. Lib sound. IO so lib SMD file to A lib black lib. Oh, I bet I missed some libraries. Is what it was. Lib black dot so. Yeah, lib ogg dot so lib vorbis lib vorbis encoder lib opus. I want to see if that will work. Real quick. No. really curious. 2.0 project set. Oh, uh, that's why it is. It is a typo. Oh, uh, that's what it was. I wonder how many people saw that and were screaming through the computers. Poor damned idiot. So, typo. Yep, there it is. I didn't properly link the light. I like, so when you ever get these like undefined reference stuff, that means because you didn't properly uh, link the libraries. Anyways, I don't digress now. So, so the example. So as you can see, it just creates this pure tone sine wave, and this is a pitch of 44. And uh, we know this because, well, if we go ahead and say right here, float pitch 40, or sorry, not 44, 440. Uh, and then kind of think of it, you know, it's a sine wave, right? So we can go ahead and use the unit circle, basically, to go ahead and calculate what it is. So the radians per second is going to be equal to pitch times 2 times pi. So it kind of looks like the uh, 2 pi r, you know, if you're trying to find the circumference of a circle, right? Except in this case, it's the pitch. And so now what we're doing is we're going ahead and just doing for all the frames that we're allowed to go through, iterate through all those frames, and then um, go ahead and develop the sample. Now this is where the actual audio that we're hearing is being developed, right here. This single line right here is single-handedly responsible for creating the sound. And basically this is just taking, you know, if you think of it as unit conversions, uh, seconds, so this is going to evaluate as total um, as seconds because frame times frames per, um, sorry, seconds per frame, as we calculated up here, uh, this is um, so that becomes seconds plus seconds, and then seconds times radians per second. So this becomes then uh, radians as a whole, and so basically it's just going it's doing as time goes on, create the sine wave, right? If you know basic um, trig, it should be fairly simple to understand. And then what we're doing is since because we're gonna have multiple channels. So, for instance, um, so I know this is two, right? Nope. Hold on. 
so I, since I know this is 2, because it's just how my setup is, I'm going to do minus 1 to demonstrate uh, exactly why, because I think I have OBS recording as uh, two channels. Make example. Yep, as you can hear, it's only going through one uh, channel. So basically, that's like just how we hear it. You know, if you're using headphones like I am, you're going to have two channels. The first channel is going to be your left ear. The second channel is going to be your right ear, right? And so it's just saying for each channel, go ahead and set the same value. And so um, this is kind of a bit tricky to think about. Um, at first, but think of it this way, we're creating a pointer to areas of channel dot pointer, basically the base pointer um, of this area for this um, specific channel, plus the areas channel that step times how many steps we're going. So this is going to point um, to the essentially to the exact spot and the buffer that we need to write to um, so that we can go ahead and um, set the sample we set. And so we're just putting this into his pointer and then we're dereferencing the pointer to tell we just want this area to be equal to this. And then this is just does some math to go ahead and figure out seconds offset. Um, and then this is just saying end right and then doing frames left minus equals frame count. Um, so yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you and how to use lib SND file. Um, uh, how to use lib SND file to go ahead and um, you know read music. So basically, it's actually not as complicated. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make use of uh, an outstream thing called um, user data and it's just how we can go ahead and pass the information that we want uh, it's, it's how we pass the information we want to the right the uh, the right callback and so first things first is I'm just gonna go ahead and create a quick whoops going to go ahead and create uh, a quick first I gotta include a couple I gotta include a uh, memory so we're gonna be using that one um, and we're also gonna be creating a new struct called uh, I'm just gonna call it pass through and it's gonna have two things uh, SF info and uh, actually yeah no need for a Pointer, but the SND file we are going to take a SND file. Sorry. Um. Oh, didn't mean to include that. <laughs> My bad. Actually, this is again. This is just my computer setup. All right. So that should be good. Yep. 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 So that's just saying we want to use it. What is the issue? Lib SND file. Oh, my bad. A lot of these stupid mistakes. Yeah. Okay. So we're going ahead and going to we're going to go ahead and use um, this new pass through struct we created. Um, let me do it right here. Yeah. Of course, it didn't color. Didn't work. So first, I'm going to go ahead and do create a new pass through, and we'll just make it a pointer pass, and you'll see why in a second. And so, all right. So the reason that I'm going ahead and creating, um, you know, this as a as a pointer is because we're going to go to have to cast um, this pass through struct as a void pointer, um, and that's and you know in C that's kind of like just like an anything pointer, um, but and but we c you know so we in C plus plus we can't exactly directly just pass it through the right data because it requires a void pointer, so we use static cast, which is what's included in memory, uh, to go ahead and convert it into that and then in write data then we can you know go ahead and extract the data from it. So first thing first we're gonna do 
is we want to go ahead and get, excuse me, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing, just set this as null, sf, because we don't, you know, have something to set it to yet, set info, and so, you know, just standard, um, error checking, so in file, you know, this is what we're going to go ahead and set it to. This is going to return a pointer, obviously, because this is the pointer. Uh, and so this is going to go ahead and start reading the file and, you know, and store it in memory for us to start accessing. And so <coughs> um, we want to go ahead and keep reading uh, using SF. Read. This is just a flag. We pass it to let it know we're reading, and then we also pass a reference to SF info, so we can go ahead and, and populate it with information that we're going to need. And then, uh, if this is you know returns null, then that means that it failed to read, and as a result, uh, we can't really continue on from there. But now that we have the information read, we can go ahead and add. Um, we can go ahead and add the to the pass through. SF info is equal to SF info. Let me just make sure I spelled that right. I did not. Info. <coughs> and then lastly, what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to remember to set the outstream user data. And we're going to use static cast to go ahead and just cast it. There's a void pointer. And then boom. User. Uh, did I do wrong? Oh, outstream. Man, I really. I apologize. I really cannot type today. Outstream. Oh my god. Outstream. Okay, that should be it. Yes. Okay, good. <coughs> so basically, what they knew, what we have done is we have started to. We know we've opened up for um, the file to read. Then we've gone ahead and created a pass-through struct pointer. And the reason we're creating a pointer is because we want to go ahead and just allocate the memory and and um, keep it going. Because if you know it goes out of scope, we want to make sure that we can still use it. Um, however, you know because we're allocating the memory like this and not using smart pointers or anything, we want to make sure that we go ahead and delete pass to make sure it's you know it stays destroyed. And so we don't have any memory leaks, you know, say you turn this into a, uh, a class. Um, yeah, but now since we have outstream, this is the same outstream that gets passed to write callback. So we can go ahead and come back up here, excuse me, and we can access it. And so, um, let's say right below here, we want to go ahead and grab this, uh, excuse me. And so now we're just going to go ahead and cast the void pointer to pass through pointer outstream uh, user data. So now we have access to that struct we passed by, so we can access s info and file. So let's just go ahead and do that in file uh, equals pass in file and then sf info sf info is equal to pass uh, sf info all right so now we have access to that sf underscore info my bad and then outstream man i cannot type today outstream okay so now that we're in here realistically uh, we don't need pitch anymore or radians per second Uh, all we're going to go ahead and need is um, a couple things. One, I, I, could, I strongly encourage you to go through and read the lib SMB um, example so you can see exactly what's going on because it's very straightforward to show. Um, but basically what we're going ahead and doing is we're creating float, sorry, a float array called buff and we're going to go ahead and have frame count you know, be the length of that. And this is going to be the buffer that gets set by when as we're reading from SMB file. And so this gives us read count, 
module is f uh, read f float. We give it the in file, the buffer, and then the frames. And I forgot to set the frames. My bad. Read count and then frames. Sorry. It has its own special data structure. Uh, count t frame. And this is how we keep track of you know like how far we've read and um. And we want to go ahead and uh, make sure we properly set this. Is FF, uh, sorry, no. Um, frame count divided by channels. So the reason. No, right. I also forgot to do this. Int uh, channel name is equal to SF info uh, dot channels. So this is just you know one of the things that we need from SF info. That's just stored in there. But basically what's going on right now, you know, as I was saying earlier, we're creating a float array called buff that stores, you know, the amount of frames that we are allowed to write. Remember, frame count is equal by passing it in here is the amount of frames that we are allowed to write, the maximum amount. Um, and so then we're, you know, just creating read count, which um, you'll see here in a second, and then creating SF count T frames. Uh, and so this is just going to allow us to, you know, keep keep track of everything. And um, then the last thing we need is, you know, just for debug purposes, I want to go ahead and clear that read count and um, frame count. Oh, frame count, and then end the line. So we're gonna change this a bit here. We're gonna do int frame equals zero from not frame count, but frame um sorry read count. And something that I didn't that you may or may not have caught on is uh, frame count divided by channels because remember we have to make sure that we worry about uh, hold on uh, oh no I forgot to include that here. So um. Uh, yeah, so the reason is frames is, you know, think of, we have this, like, so we have the samples between, um, thanks to SF read float, uh, from zero to frame counts. So we have that many next to go through and read. However, we have to make sure that we um, account that we have two channels. So the first, you know, think of it like every two, and, and in my particular case, you know, you could have many more different channels depending on your setup. But in my case, you're gonna the first two are gonna be specifically for, um, for uh, um, you know one frame, you know the first first one in that frame would be your left ear and right ear. So we have to do that over and over again, and so that's why we're dividing it by channels, so we know how many each of those frames that we can write through, and then read count is just returning um, how many uh, we can write. <coughs> And so, if we go ahead and in here, grab the sample um, inside both of these, we're going to go ahead and create the sample. Int uh, sample, and then buffer is just the s music, is two plus channel, and oh, sorry, not K, another typo frame and yeah and the reason we're doing it times two is for each you know each frame is going to have um to have to keep skipping a beat and then plus channel is going to tell us which channel so the first channel will be zero and one so we can keep just skipping along um and so let's go ahead first let me just copy that slash all that slash slash and make it real quick so luckily you know no compile errors and um something that should be uh make sure you do is you have it like in a dot waveform or whatever lib s and d file can read um also this is just a song ajr is 100 days uh and so i was just listening to it and it was the first thing i saw when i opened youtube but yeah just for an example Oh, uh, where am I 
this up. If it does that, then it means that, like it didn't read the file. Yeah, see, I said it just sample. I need to tell it sample that wave because it was you know picking a file. It didn't exist, so there was nothing to read. So it just returned one. So let me just make that again. Sample. And so as we can see, we have a lot of different values here. Um, but it wouldn't. So something that can happen. Here, I'm gonna leave it running for a quick second because the song starts off kind of quiet. Yeah. All right. Let's not get a copyright strike. <laughs> um. So that's what it's supposed to sound like. Uh, something that we can directly note, like debugging, is like, you know, I had um, the numbers print out, is we can see that we have read count and frame count. So read count is how many we're going, and then how many, sorry, like, you know, how many frames, basically, we can go ahead and read, and then frame count is how many maximum we can. So this doesn't look right, and if you think about it for a second, this is a lot of wasted frame count time that we've asked for and is being allocated for us. You know, look, every single instance is it's half, you know, for two channels. And so since we're wasting so much time, it could be that, you know, the audio is just not being played in the right intervals. So what if we tried doing this? What if we doubled the buffer but didn't double, or how about this, channels? We multiply it by the channels because, you know, that's how many times it's going to be. Um, and, uh, excuse me, so we go ahead and, um, we double or multiply those by the amount so that they equal, so then that will decide to finally play. Hopefully, or so we're at least not wasting as much time. So basically, you know, how much time we're actually, how many frames we're actually playing through and how many time we've requested. So now they match up. So that's good. Um, now I just gotta figure out why is it not playing? Does it have something to do with down here? ahead real quick so you can go ahead and one file one file I still can figure this I still can okay let's take this from my past um here if I come over to here and so then I can really understand why it's changed Buff. Um, buff. Then I can go 
Speed effort made by the trains in the train, which is zero, and is less than lead count of a channel, which is zero. Channel is less than layout channel count. Hey, channels. Float sample equals. Oh, you know what it is? Not in sample. That's my fault. Props on you if you figured it out. But because sample is going to be doing like negative one and one, or it's, or when we're doing int, it's casting this to, to an integer. Which, um, since it's between negative, it's negative one, one and um, sorry, between negative one and one, uh, and not. I mean, it could be one but not terribly often, it's going to ahead and just cut that down, truncate it to zero. So that's why I wouldn't play anything. Just a silly mistake. So now if we go ahead and rebuild this, we can go ahead and see that's playing the song. Remember when we but there's a bug. It's playing it at a much higher pitch, which is caused because it's playing it faster than it should be. And like I said earlier in the video, it's because of sample rate. Or, sorry, not sample rate. <laughs> it's because of, uh, um, wait, yeah, 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 I don't know what I'm talking about. Sample rate. Sorry. Um, it's because of sample rate. And it's just a quick one-line fix. But I want to see, you know, I'll leave it as an exercise um, for you to do it. Uh, if you really end up, you know, needing help and you can't figure it out, you can come to the Discord and ask me, and I'll show you. But... This has been a, um, a t you know, just showing you and going through and showing you how to use, how to like read a file and understanding exactly what's going on within, you know, libsound.io and, and showing you exactly how to use it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, see you guys later.